I'm gonna explain how I might approach a difficult scene like this tactically and why you need to think tactically in a series of steps in order to create the scene without it being a complete disaster. I'm gonna show you this clip and explain why it's difficult. So it firstly requires knowledge of 3D space and 3D objects. It has liquid behavior in it. So you need to understand how the liquid behaves, the ocean, and then you've got a 3D object on top of that, which is going to be rotating in all different directions in 3D space. And it's going to be influenced by, by the behavior of the water. You're gonna have the smooth 3D camera movement of the camera coming down and working its way in to the boat itself is going to require lots of knowledge of perspective and on top of that you've got keeping up with the animation itself um, it can be quite difficult to do that on a shot like this which is very free moving and very intense and keeping the intensity high so how the hell are you going to start animating a scene like this if you're like most people you can't just start drawing the first frame and the next frame and the next frame and the next frame until you have the full animation. It's just too much to calculate at once. You can't calculate all the different angles that are going to be changing, the timing and spacing of the animation. So that's not really an option here. You need to do it in steps or layers, however you look at it. So here are the tactics that I decided on for this scene. Um, we also continually make edits to the frames as we go uh, and the timing and the spacing. So keep in mind that it's also about just continually improving whatever you've put down on the, on the screen. The waves are the first step that I started. So this is not even considering the different angles that the camera is going to have to go into. It's from a single fixed angle. And for this, we strip out everything but the waves animation. So no tracking in, no boats, no lightning, no sea spray. We just draw the key poses for the waves in a continuous way. Then we go to timing the frames. So this is just where you move the keyframes apart to reflect the passage of time between each pose. Um, and this is mostly intuitive guesswork and it's important that you get this done at some kind of stage and, and that you're mindful of it. I, I want to just think of this in a single stage by itself so I can give it my full concentration. So we've done the waves, at least we've done them very rough and very spaced apart on the timeline. Now we can, we have something for our boat to sit on. So from the same angles that we've just put down, now we can go off of that for the boat shape. The waves will be directly influencing the course of the boat. So it was important that we got the waves down first. We now sort of mimic the place in the timeline where the wave frames are and we put the boat on top of that. Third step now, or fourth step, sorry, um, shifting everything so that the camera tracks the boat and stays in the center of the frame. So we're not zooming in yet, we're not tilting the camera or anything like that, but we are just moving everything in the frame around so that the boat is in the center. And this is crucial for the next step where we're able to move closer in to the boat, but we can only have that camera moving into the boat when the boat is already in the center and that makes it nice and easy for us. So now we go frame by frame in now that the boat is in the center and we literally just scale up each frame as we go. So we scale a little more each time. I tried it at first with a motion tween and I didn't really like the effect that it gave because it was on ones and it just didn't seem as natural as if I did it myself stepping it through each with each frame as well. So after that, the next step is adding the camera tilt to show the horizon line. Now this is one of the hardest parts. This is the real tough one. 
we have to physically redraw every frame that has the angle change and we have to judge by how much that changes each time and then we need to update the angle of the boat to match the changing angle of the water. There's no other way to do this other than to just draw it from scratch. This step is probably the most demanding. So now we go on to the first round of breakdowns and in-betweens. Now we've finished the hardest phase of the animation. So that is all the really tough stuff out the way. And uh, now you can relax a little bit more. It's plain sailing from here, if you pardon the pun. Reworking the frames is the next thing that I would do. So just making sure that each frame works well as a still image as well as when it's playing in sequence. And then adding more details to the waves because in the first part I just roughed them out with the extremely loose lines making sure that um, I just got down the essence of what the waves would be doing. But now I want to make sure that each frame works well as a still image as well as when it's playing in sequence. So that's really important. So you should be able to pause your animation at any point and for the frame to sort of look good. You know, ideally you'd want that to, to look like a poster or something. Uh, that's not always achievable. Sometimes it's not correct to do that, but uh, in a long shot like this, I think um, I think it's a good rule to go by. And also, I'm trying to sculpt the waves more so that they look three-dimensional. And this can be quite tough from an upward angle. You know, when you're looking at a wave from the top, it can be quite difficult to do this sort of sculpting thing, but I gave it my best shot. Another round of in-betweens. That is needed for drawing the characters on the boat reliably, because right now the boat, if you look at the frames of the boat, it's, they're too far apart to really um, have a good foundation for drawing the characters on the boat. So we're gonna need to do another round of in-betweens, and then it will be much more comfortable for animating those characters on the boat. So now we draw the characters on the boat, that's the next step. And this time, the characters are directly influenced by the movement of the boat, you see? The boat is directly influenced by the water. So we started with the main effect of which was the water, then we moved it to the boat, then we moved it to the people on the boat. And we're sort of going down the hierarchy as we go. For animating these characters, I just want to wing it at this point because you're really going to be focusing on the piece as a whole. So the characters in there, as long as they just look convincingly like they're hanging on for dear life, uh, just have fun with that animation, I guess. Then refining the characters as well, doing a bit of refining work, especially at the end where it goes in close to the characters. I want to nail that ending because the ending is sort of the lasting impression that you'll give in any shot. Adding water details like spray to the boat is something I would do towards the end of the rough animation stage. It's not important for you to put that in early, so this is a good opportunity now that you've got the, the, uh, the main objects locked down. The water spray, the splashes are easy things to just add in at the end. Um, then we can go on to colouring the boat, colouring the water uh, and compositing the shot to add rain and lightning effects and make the water look a bit better. And that's about it. <laughs> there are a lot of steps involved. I hope that that was kind of insightful for what a really complex scene like this, very difficult, intimidating scene, how it can be broken down into steps that are more manageable and you really realize that you can you can basically animate anything as long as you are committed to it and you come in with a plan and you have a lot of time on your hands and i also want to say that it starts off hard and it gets easier and it's natural for it to be really tough in the beginning if you like this video please 
subscribe to the channel, check the links in the description for all the different things I link to, things that can really help you. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.